this is Fingers with Dimension Terrain, and for this portion of the DT 2.0 guides, we're going to be talking about custom pivot in the copy and paste window. Uh, custom pivot is one of those things that sounds real complicated until it's not. And it's actually really easy to figure out. We're going to make some spiral stairs right off the stop, uh, right off the top rather, uh, with very minimal math and just some basic rotations. So the one thing that's important to remember about custom pivot is it is a pivot point, especially for multiple items. And for this, I like to use uh, poles and corner posts. I've only recently learned how to use custom pivot myself, and thanks to Sailor at Zavio for helping me out with it. Um, we've already used custom pivot to make the rotunda for this dome, so you got an idea then if you watched the offset calculator video of how easy it can be. But spiral stairs are item intensive and they're fancy and a lot of people want them and they like to know how to make them but there's uh, the math involved and the manipulation involved kind of makes them time consuming and a pain in the rear to make because of where the arrows intersect. Now I call this the center point even though it's technically not a center point. Um, it's just where the arrows intersect and on poles and corner posts is at the bottom and poles have an added advantage of correlating directly into game units a pole at the default size is one game unit which would equate to about one meter so now you know about how tall my character is but I'm gonna make it just a little bit larger for this so it's easier to see the pole and I'm going to set out set out a plank here. I like wood planks because they're cheap. And for experimenting like this, you know, it doesn't really matter what you use. Um, and it doesn't matter what the scale is. I'm scaling it just a little bit large so that it's easy to see again. I'm going to raise it up just a little bit so it's not flat to the ground. And as you can see with this one, where the arrows intersect is actually pretty much in the center. Um, it's not quite centered, it's actually on one side. Which means that when your poles get, get flipped around, or your, your planks rather get flipped around, they won't line up exactly right because it's all on one edge. But these, uh, these things here, wait, let me show it because that's easier than trying to tell it. If I were to just, say, try to make a spiral, spiral staircase out of planks, using it the way that I would, say, for poles or um, the corner posts, if I copy, come up point 0.2, we'll just do a little bitty rotation here, and 10. This is what happens. So I either have to do a whole bunch of manual moving to try to line those out the other way, or I have to calculate a bunch of offsets, which still ends up just taking a lot of time. Well, with custom pivot, I no longer have to do that. So we're going to drop this rotation down to 6, and we want it to go 90 degrees, so 6 times 15 is 90. And I'm going to use this pole as my pivot point. Now, why did I pick 6 degrees? Well, because remember, it's going to be real narrow here, but it's going to widen out here. 6 degrees is going to pretty much eliminate any gap between my steps. And if 6 degrees ends up being too close, then of course you can repull it and stretch it out to 7 and save up some items that way. But anyways, how to use custom pivot. So we have the pole, and we're going to hit pick and that picks our pivot point. Now we're going to come back to the plank and hit copy and with all of our offset settings in we're going to leave this plank here because otherwise then it would set the next one point two up and there would be a huge uh, sticking point there and we're just going to hit paste. And as you can see this edge of each plank is rising up in the same spot and it turned it perfectly. 
And now if I want to add a second floor up here, I've got some stairs that'll help me get there. And it took 16 items to do one thing, but now I want to do a riser. So I'm going to copy and paste the second plank in and then rotate that to 90 in the pitch. Manually move it in if I don't feel like setting an offset. Close that out and then I want my settings to be exactly the same as they were for the steps. I'm going to pick the pole, copy the plank, and then paste. Now, because my stairs are a safety hazard with no rail, I'm going to use some wood poles and just, I'm not being real precise, precise about where it's going on the step, kind of in the middle, kind of. And as you can see, that six degree rotation worked out pretty well on the ends. There's almost no overlap which is good. I'm gonna pick the pole, pick the metal pole, then come over here and copy the wood pole, and then hit paste. Now if you decide that this is too many poles on this railing, you can pull those out. Maybe try to widen that out to 12. Seven. Let's see how that works. And then hit paste. But the one thing I didn't do was recalculate the offset. That's going to need to go up by four. Point four instead of point two. There we go. out pretty well but I still don't have a railing I've just got posts here so I'm going to take another pole and try to move it in position and I want to try to follow the angle of the stairs reduce this down to six. Why six? Because if I do seven, then I'll have one sticking out of this pole here. And that wouldn't make a lot of sense unless I set up another pole on the landing. So let's we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna pick it, copy it, and paste. So my angle on here is not quite right, so that's going to be easy to fix. There we go. Up. Oh, I'm going to pick, copy, and paste. That's better. Things lined up much more evenly that way. And I have a nice rail. I did this with minimal math. Maybe five minutes it took. When I did the, the written guide for this, it took longer to write out all the explanations than it did to actually do it. Now, say I want to get rid of this ugliness here, so I want to make some new walls. I'm going to clear this out. I want to copy another plank, change the rotation to 90. Move it into position. Okay. Then I'm going to 
go back to my original settings, the point two, the six, and the fifteen. I'm gonna pick, pick up that pole. I'm gonna copy this plank and leave it there, and then paste. And this assumes that you would have a, a pole or something here to hide this section or maybe a wall, um, however you choose to, to do it. Or you could set another railing there if that's your choice. But that's how you would make some spiral stairs in not a lot of time and with no headache, which is the most important part. And then your visitors show up and they're like, wow, how did you do that? And be like, well, that was just that good. So let's go ahead and get rid of all this. Because it's easy enough to make that it doesn't really bother me to pull it and rebu rebuild it and pull it and rebuild it. Um, when normally when I did the toolbox stairs, I saved that set because I only wanted to do it one time. Because there was enough, too much manipulation going on. Now when we did the offset calculator guide, we made the rotunda for the stone using custom pivot, so I'm not going to do it again because it, it's easy to figure out and it's not, it's already been done. What I want to do now is say I want to take a, make a circle that's upright around this pole here. So I'm going to take a second Hole, paste it in and then put it together. Now why two poles? Because this is going to give me an idea of where my start point should be and my end point should be. Where my upper and bottom, bottom limits are for the, the cubes. I'll just go ahead and use some red poles. Let's scale it to 0.5. And of course, you know, however you want to scale it and how si what size you want it to be, everything is, you know, it's going to take some experimentation and trial and error. The important thing is to not get frustrated with it because once you figure it out, you'll be like, oh my gosh, how did I ever, how did I ever build without it? So what I don't need are these and that. So I've got this. Now, just as a common guide, I'm going to say that I want my circle to be 15 degrees between each cube. 15 times 24 is 360. I'm going to pick my middle pole. I'm going to copy my cube, and I'm going to pull it because those 24 blocks will give me a complete circle. And then I'm going to paste, and just we'll just see how it works. Oh, well, it worked fantastic, except for. Uh, one thing, I went in the wrong direction. So we'll let it finish. And I'm going to change my offset to 15 in the roll. And just hit paste. I don't need to repick, I don't need to recopy, I don't need to do anything. Uh, because the only thing that I changed was that one offset. I want to say lay that circle flat. All I've got to do is a relative rotation and now it's on the ground. And if I want to just save it and reuse it later, then of course I can save it and do whatever. Now say if I want to make that an arch. Then all I gotta do is change the number of copies to 12. And I would have needed
needed to leave in the original plot. But you get the idea. And that's how easy custom pivot is. And it doesn't have to be um, even building blocks. You can use whatever you want to pivot. Let me bring this back up. We'll just use this obelisk as a as a good thing to play with here because we have a lot of those things to a build I tore down. Okay, so we already know we want to go that way. Four again. I'm going to pick the pole. I'm going to copy my obelisk and remove it and paste. And then as you can see, everything is pivoting around that intersection point of this metal pole. just spun out these elbows into a neat little uh, starburst pattern. I'll need to go in and manually offset um, some of these items to get rid of all that flicker that's in the middle. But outside of that, it worked perfectly. And that's custom pivot. So join me next time when we'll be doing an overview of the entire copy and paste segment. Happy building!